everyone to the first episode of Morbid Visions. I am Morbid and the purpose of this series is just to have fun and discuss uh, different horror topics. Anything that may have influenced the type of movies we make and um, yeah just different things that horror fans enjoy. Alright so this first episode I figured for the first one to make it easy um, I'll discuss something I know best. Uh, I'm going to discuss each of the official full-length movies that have been put up on Morbid Vision Films. So, we'll start with the first one. Um, back in 1995, I think we started shooting this movie. Um, first, And strangely enough, this is our only non-horror film, which is weird that this one is the first one that I ever got picked up by a distributor. But, uh, soon to be dead, um, it's a crime drama action film. Reason why we made this movie is, you know, uh, people around my age, whatever, if you remember, back in the mid 90s, horror genre just died, basically. Um, mainstream horror, anyways. There was still a lot of cool stuff going on in the underground and all that. But uh, mainstream horror just dried right out. Uh, the MPAA was very strict, so there was hardly any gore in movies. Not that that was you know, important or anything, but just it wasn't like the 80s anymore. It, um, it, I, get, I don't know, it got a lot more tougher for people to make horror films. So, back then, I s discovered the uh, films of John Woo. Um, I started watching a lot of Asian cinema, and a lot of, you know, crime movies, action movies, uh, swordplay films, and all that. So that helped inspire Soon To Be Dead. And I've caught, I've, one of the things, uh, the most mainstream probably influence I've had here, is when it came to writing the movie, uh, Pulp Fiction definitely was a huge influence. And it basically taught me how to write dialogue for character. And also, John Woo's action films obviously were a huge influence on that. It was basically us deciding to have fun. We just like, we have to do this. We have to try this, give this a shot or whatever. So, you know, the whole two-fisted gun thing, we, we just had a blast with that. So if you haven't seen John Woo's The Killer, um, Hong Kong action film, you have to check this out. This movie is amazing. The action is unlike anything you'll see in American movies. Uh, awesome action movie. Now, from because of uh, the action and the destruction we did in Soon To Be Dead, um, the same company asked us and said, hey, if you could guys, you guys got a knack for destruction, if exact words, if you guys can take that type of action and incorporate it into a vampire film, that's something we'd really be interested in selling. So, obviously, a distributor asking me to make a movie, you know, first time in my life that's ever happened, so I jumped at the chance. So I said, yeah, definitely, we'll do that. That's what we are. We are horror guys, so we will absolutely do what you want. And it was a chance to, you know, do more crazy action and everything. But even back then, it was like, oh, my God vampires what what the hell are we gonna do with vampires because even back then it was so overdone so this we actually started um, so the movie actually ended up being at dawn they sleep I hope you can see that with the this one's still sealed this is one of the only copy I have that's still sealed but um so at dawn they sleep came out of that and came up with a story about drug dealers or rival drug dealers to help incorporate the action you know they are at war with each other so they end up with shootouts I came up with the idea of angels um, turning people into vampires to kill off the human race so they could inherit the earth. I just thought that would make for a much more original um, vampire film because, you know, like I said, back to, even in 96, 97, I think when we started filming, vampires were like flooded then. There was just so many of them. So obviously the influences behind that, behind that um, the angel storyline was definitely inspired by the prophecy. Uh, Chris, the Christopher Walken movie with um, he plays Gabriel the angel and they're having a war in heaven and uh, they come down to earth Gabriel comes down to earth to look for the blackest heart something like that so that definitely heavily inspired the angel storyline I believe that's basically where I got it from I can't think of any other things that would have inf influenced the angel stuff and then of course another movie that hugely inspired it um, the action wise is uh, ooh, my DVD's ripped okay uh, John Woo's Hard Boiled, as well as, you know, The Killer. So obviously both of these movies had a huge impact on us. Um, again, all the action stuff was basically, you know, we're doing it the two-fisted thing. And so uh, all that was obviously influenced by uh, John Woo and Chow Yun-Fat. Um, 
I want. I want to go back and make a small, grittier type movie. And I had an idea that um, just wouldn't leave my head. And that was, I hope you can even see this, a Dead Girl on Film. This is, again, this is the copy that we sell at conventions, um, just a DVD-R. <clears throat> it had one release long, long time ago. It was kind of, it wasn't even really worth signing with. Again, it released. Um, sorry about the dust on these things. But um, it got released by a company, and um, it was just put on a cheap double feature with another movie that wasn't even a horror film. Um, nothing against them or whatever, but just why they paired these two movies up, I don't know. The next thing we decided to do is uh, we actually decided, a lot of people kept um, asking me on like message boards on the internet and stuff. Uh, there was no Facebook back then. To make a zombie film, they would love to see what we could do with zombies. And that's when Bone Sickness came up. So Bone Sickness was the next movie. We started shooting Bone Sickness in two, 2002, and we released our first version in 2004. And obviously, you know, of course, if you're making a zombie film, the ultimate inspiration is George Romero. So George Romero's original trilogy, Night of the Living Dead, Dawn of the Dead, Day of the Dead, was obviously a huge influence on that. More the storytelling. The storytelling and, well, George Romero is actually probably the reason why I got into making movies in the first place. But um, what really inspired Bone Sickness was the films of Lucio Fulci. Uh, his trilogy of Zombie, the, um, the Beyond, and City of the Living Dead. City of the Living Dead the most, though, because the atmosphere in this movie is just absolutely amazing. I love it. Uh, it's just the whole movie just drips with atmosphere and of course the gore too because his gore just very graphic very up close you get really in, really close in there and um, I mean just the beginning scene alone when it opens with um, a cemetery in daylight and this fog rolling in the cemetery just everything about it is just so eerie so this had a huge influence on the look and the atmosphere of bone sickness we were definitely going for the Italian zombie film in bone sickness now, Bone Sickness actually ended up being our biggest movie. Um, that movie went everywhere. But instead of going, building on that and going bigger, and like, let's make a more mainstream movie, let's try to get bigger, we went the opposite direction completely. We went, I wanted to make something small, gritty, and nasty, and the next movie was Fetus. Fetus is by far our most popular movie. Bone Sickness was our biggest with the most exposure, but this is our most popular film. Uh, Everything just lined up just right for this movie. Everything just came together perfectly for this film. And all my sickest ideas went into fetus. Uh, yeah, there's just something special about whatever happened with the creation of this movie. Now, what helped inspire this, this is one of the first movies where my writing style developed in a certain way. Um, I stopped writing full scripts. Fetus started off as a short film, and it just evolved as we filmed. And next thing I knew, it was our next full-length movie. So, what really the two films that really inspired um, the making of *Fetus* is I wanted to do just something bizarre. I wanted to do something off the wall, like like with the bizarre splatterpunk, cyberpunk Japanese films. And so, obviously, the first, the main influence for that was *Tetsuo the Iron Man*. This is an incredible movie. If you have not seen *Tetsuo the Iron Man*, you have to check this movie out. It's just the visuals are unbelievable i mean it's just it's just crazy this the stuff that shinya satomoto uh created is unlike anything else i mean you can tell he spent hours just on a few seconds and frames of this movie um so yeah but after we started filming i did realize um i, I filmed some crazy weird stuff right off the bat but as the story started unfolding, I realized this isn't the type of movie that comes natural to me. Um, this style doesn't come natural to me. So, you know, it just, then that's when the movie started to evolve on its own. Um, the story took shape. Uh, the characterizations grew. And like I said, it, then it became a full-length movie. But another major influence, obviously, I think a lot of people figure this one out on their own, was the guinea pig series from Japan. Guinea Pig series came out in the mid to late 80s. 
it was basically a, fe- a bunch of effects artists in Japan showing off their skills, showing off what they can do. And they just made some of the nastiest, most vile, brutal, what look like home movies. Um, but Mermaid in a Manhole is different. Mermaid in a Manhole is a fantasy movie. But still, it's just got pure, just nasty, vile gore in it. And I love it. So, yeah, Mermaid in a Manhole had a big influence on Fetus. You know, the type of gore we were doing. So, after Fetus, um, we figured as an experiment, let's see if we can shoot an entire movie in within 30 days, within a month's time, just shooting. And then I'll allow whatever it needs to be done for editing and a sound mix and all that. So we decided, well, why don't we do a zombie film? We know zombies. I've already got all the stuff. I will need to make some new stuff, whatever, but let's do a zombie film. So that's when Blood Pigs came up. We decided to make movie Blood Pigs. And um, I hate to say it, but this movie was made for all the wrong reasons. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, let's shoot a movie in 30 days. And I think by the second week, we're like, this is not going to happen. There's no way we can pull this off. Um, Blood Pigs was actually more action-oriented when it first started. Um, it was just a straight zombie film. with It was post-apocalyptic with people trying to survive. And so there was conflict going on and everything. We, the sword fighting was always in there. We wanted to do the sword fighting right off the bat. So huge influence on uh, Blood Pigs with you know because we knew we wanted to do sword fighting was Asian sword play films. Uh, the Bride with White Hair, amazing visual movie. Incre- some incredible stuff in here. Very good storyline, too. It's like a fantasy story. But just, obviously, so we didn't, we couldn't do on our own. Obviously, it was the wire work, you know, with people flying around and doing all this sort of stuff. I love that stuff, but that, we couldn't, we knew we couldn't pull that off. But um, we wanted to do the sword stuff. And, you know, all the sword play films really, you know, really influenced that. The Swordsman. Um, Chinese ghost story films those were a big influence obviously because also we're, we were making a zombie film so of course you know Lucille Fulci and George Romero were right in there as well so that was, just, that was a big influence obviously but one of the weirdest strangest influences that might surprise people for blood pigs which is the blood pig creatures themselves um me and Rich, we always wanted to do a creature like the Blood Pigs. We, you know, well, with Rich on all fours, on for all fours on stilts on the front and the back, and making this massive creature. What influenced that was Jim Henson's The Dark Crystal. Yes, uh, PG. Well, actually, yeah, this was rated PG. PG family fantasy film was a big influence on our what rumor called the goriest movie of two thousand and ten. <laughs> So our one of our glorious movies was influenced by a family film. Um, if you haven't seen The Dark Crystal, it's an incredible movie. Just the amount of work Jim Henson put into this was unbelievable. But the Landstriders that I think show up halfway through or something, that the main characters are riding, the big four-legged creatures. Um, this DVD, I'm, I'm sure I haven't looked at the Blu-ray or anything. I don't, I don't need to own the Blu-ray of this, but um, they go behind the scenes of this and the way they show how they did the land stride. It was just, it was just awesome. It was just so inspiring, and that's what made us go like, all right, we have to do this. We have to make these creatures, and we did it. We pulled it off. Thanks to Rich George, definitely because he was the one that was in all that stuff. He was on the stilts. He had to walk around in those things, and when he stood up and he, put, he was eight feet tall when um, he stood actually up. And then when he put his arms up, he was just massive in that thing. So, that was really cool. All right, all right so, Blood Pigs came out in 2010. Um, won the award in Brew Mug Magazine for Glorious Movie of 2010, which was an absolute honor. That was awesome. Now, from there, that's how, that's how Cryptic Plasm came about. We st- Actually, I don't even know, remember what year we started filming this. Um, but I think this might have taken a couple of years to film. A lot of effects. We did a lot of stuff in this movie. This was so much fun. I loved shooting this movie. Uh, a lot of most of the time we're out in the woods, so which was awesome. I love shooting in the woods. There's just something about being out there. It's just it, you feel so free and creative out in the woods. So, um, story about uh, a cryptozoologist who um, gets offered to have his own TV show. So he goes out and he chooses some uh, stories he wants to 
film. And one of them is about an abandoned, abandoned town he had heard about. And he gets there and everything's gone. And no population. The place is hidden. It has actually been hidden by the government. And he found out a way to, if you go a certain way, you'll find the place. But once he gets there, something latches hold of him and his life starts to fall apart. And that's where the movie goes from there. If you've seen it, you know. Um, so, with uh, Cryptic Plasm, a huge influence... It probably influenced a lot of all the movies they do, but it mainly came out with Encrypted Plasm is H.P. Lovecraft. H.P. Lovecraft is just absolutely amazing. No one alive still has had the imagination of H.P. Lovecraft. The stuff he created was just mind-blowing. The fact that he was doing this in the 20s, 1920s and 1930s, um, unbelievable unbelievable storyline of creations the stuff just like the universes he created was unbelievable so definitely had a chance to really get into lovecraftian type horror with cryptic plasm going in with the cosmic horror and cosmic entities and using wormholes and ultimate dimensions we just cryptic plasm allowed me to just go crazy i could do whatever i wanted with this and i we took it really far and had a great time doing it but also the major influence for the storyline of Cryptic Plasm with him, with a cryptozoologist getting his own TV show was Destination Truth. <laughs> I love this show. This show was awesome. Uh, this first season, eh, it's okay. They don't do much. But the other seasons, oh, it's just it's pretty scary stuff too. Forget, forget even the paranormal or whatever they were going after, you know, the cryptos and stuff. Just the locations they went to and some of these jungles is like when you think of the reality of it like they could have easily been killed out in these places you know some of the wild animals that were out there even some places that i think they had to worry about pirates and stuff and being uh, kidnapped but yeah destination truth great show um the whole basis around this is what helped uh, was the inspiration for the character the main character in cryptic plasm and also uh, the lead character that Joe Olson plays in Cryptic Plasm, David Gates. Josh Gates. There we go. Uh, obviously, the last name, he's named after Josh Gates of Destination Truth. <laughs> I was wondering if it would be a little too close or whatever, but I was like, screw it, let's just do it. And the name David Gates just sounded so natural for the movie. So, on from Cryptic Plasm. Cryptic Plasm came out, the DVD came out in 2017 for that one. And I can't remember if it was right away or whatever. For the longest time, um, if you've been to their website, MoaVisionFilms.com, I have a filmography page, and it starts from the very first short film me and Rich George ever made. And basically in order, I show like two pictures of each movie, and people have, I got lots of emails from people, messages, um, is there any way to see your first, the very first short films you ever made? And I, my answer would always be like, no, I don't sell them because, you know, they're not, they're not very good, and the quality's not very good, they were shot on VHS... And I just didn't feel comfortable selling them because I didn't think, uh, me personally, I didn't think they were worth spending the money on. But over the years, I just kept getting asked over and over and over again. So many re ask, requests um, to see the very first short films. And, you know, though, and Rich had mentioned it, uh, Stacy, our business manager, she's like, why don't you do something with these? You know, people are asking for them. So I, I was like, okay. I tried to think of an idea that would work best for it. And I finally came up with a concept that I was comfortable with, and that's when Morbid Tales came out. So Morbid Tales finally, I finally agreed to release the, it's the very first three short films that we ever made back in the early 90s. And um, obviously it's an anthology, but instead of just showing the three clips, create a story about um, three guys who sold their souls to a demon to help better their lives or help relatives or whatever, and 15 years later, they just they had to agree to come back, meet up with the demon, and they just had to entertain him with a story. And each of the stories, uh, the first are short films. But the running, you know, the inside joke of the movie is that we're just like, well, these short films suck. But what we decided to do is, because I was still a little leery about just selling the first three shorts, I'm like, let's make a full wraparound. Well, not just a wraparound story, but let's give it a finale that just rivals what the finales of our our regular full-length movies are known for 
Um, we've kind of gotten known for doing huge effects finales to our films. And um, I'm like, well, let's make this no different. Let's give this a huge finale with lots of effects, with big creature effects and everything. So people are getting the first original movies, and they're, getting a br they're basically getting a brand new short film as well. So that was the plan for that. And so the, uh, obviously the main influence, because it's an anthology, is Creepshow. Love Creepshow, one of my top three movies of all time. To me, it's the ultimate in the horror anthology. It's just so so much fun, so good. So, uh, yeah, uh, as entertaining as this is, the granted the the wraparound story is a lot shorter in this one, but one to try to make more details as entertaining as something like Creepshow. And but also the main influence, obviously, since going by what our first movies were. Uh, my favorite movie of all time is the Evil Dead, and um, especially um, the second the second short story we ever made, uh, Final Scream. Final Scream is basically us out in the woods doing Evil Dead. <laughs> you know, Rich George. We even used to joke that Rich George was our Bruce Campbell. He would just throw himself out of trees. He would hurl himself down these hills with his body skidding all the way down and everything. Um, so yeah. Evil Dead probably kicked us off, even though George Romero and Tom Savini's work is what got me into making movies. This was our main influence right off the bat. Just the everything about Evil Dead is just what I wanted to do with uh, making movies. From the atmosphere, the gore, the type of story it was. Okay, so that's that's all of our full length films, and uh, this is the first episode. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, if you enjoyed it, yeah, I gotta do the whole routine now of please like the video and please subscribe to More Vision Films because the more subscribers we get, hopefully this whole YouTube thing will help help these movies continue and help us make more films for you guys. So, um, yeah, that's it for episode one and I'll be back soon.